On this episode of NSFW Show, we're joined by nobody. We are alone, as we are in life, naked, in this unforgiving, cruel forest. It's me and Brian, huddling with each other, talking about our insecurities, and Night Attack 2, Enjoy the Garden, available now on the iTunes Store. Also, we tease an upcoming project and talk about other stuff in children's programming. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW Show. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 175, recorded on April 22nd, 2013. Three strikes and you're stupid. This episode of NSFW Show is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. And Shutterstock. With over 900,000 high-quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code NSFW4. And Ting.com. Ting is a new mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay for what you use, doesn't require a contract, and offers unlimited devices on one pooled plan. To save $25 on your new Ting device, visit NSFW.Ting.com. That's NSFW. Dot ting dot com. Okay, here it is. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. This is apparently what was on his mind. I believe that's a quote of a song. Uh, days after the authorities say he bombed the Boston Marathon. You, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets, the home to the number one comedy album in the entire English speaking world. Night Attack 2, of course, fronted by Justin Robert Young. What is going on, Professor JRY? Brian Brushwood, how does it feel to be king of all the Englishers? Dude, I, I, I now I don't have confirmation about Australia. Like, I thought we somebody were get one us in word. Fetch us word immediately from the hinterlands of Oz. But I'll tell you what, man. It's like I'm looking at it right now. It, it, it just keeps being number one. It's still in the top 200 after releasing on 420. It's There is some part of me that that I can't even accept this. Like, do you, do you obsessively check the position of, of it, by the way? I just get all these voice comments from Australia. You know, I don't think it's all that funny. <laughs> they don't like it apparently because it's not number one there. Uh, oh, really? Well, screw. Oh so, oh, so now we have to go to war with Australia? Is I'm just saying it? they're a prison colony. I didn't forget. Oh, I didn't you know forget. Now that I think about it. There's one other Brian Brushwood in the world, and he seemed like a nice guy, uh, but he's definitely in Australia. And I wonder if maybe they just got confused. They went for the wrong Brian Brushwood. I don't know. Well, and I don't, I mean, whatever. I, at least we know that we have friends. In Canada, the UK, yep. Ireland, yep. and good old yep. U.S. of A. Right here <laughs> in our country origin. Brian, what are we? Number one. Number one. Top of the plow, goddamn humdinger, gold cup, yep. blue ribbon. Living giant foam finger. Number one. Uh, dude, okay, so uh, how high did you think Way, the album Like go? I literally just fell over because I was so high. When How I got the news, I was so you? high that I started to think of different quantum mechanics. And I was like, what if I were able to engineer a way that we could record the album again? And then I <laughs> ate a Cheeto. Uh, okay. How high if, would you have gambled that the album was going to go in the, in the total charts? Like, what did you, what did you hope we would make it up to? You know, it, it's hard because we've, we've, I mean, like, in, in, in all seriousness, all the stuff that we've done, uh, we've always tried to pick ambitious targets, but also 
semi-soft targets. We had we had no uh, expectations on the first album and how it was going to sell, and then all of a sudden we showed up on the Billboard charts. Uh, for N Diamond Club, we knew that the soft yet prestigious place to sell an ebook would be iTunes. This was right. the first time that we've actually gone for the best of breed, toughest chart to possibly get into, which is the world's largest music retailer, the United States uh, iTunes store. And I mean, my my outward craziest fantasy was maybe we'd be able to to kiss into that top 20. Um, but well, I'll tell you, I, I, I mean, I, I, and I think I was with you. I was like, well, you never know. Maybe for one hour we might have hit, you know, top 20 or top 10. But the mere fact that we barreled all the way up to 35, beating Macklemore for, uh, for a bit, like we oh, genuinely pop had, some tags. <laughs> uh, we genuinely had a top 40, uh, album, like, like no, no faking it, no, no qualifying it. It was the top 40 album on iTunes. And it's, you know, and, and the fact that, you know, do, here's the question. Do you think Night Attack will stay as a number one in comedy for an entire week? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you, there's only one way to find out. And that's if you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, subscribers to the NSFW show, continue to purchase it. That is, of course, Night Attack 2. Enjoy the garden. Available now on the iTunes store. Only $3.99. I'll tell you, 188 positive five-star comments and reviews can't be wrong. Or we have at least 188 followers who would do that. Um, That's fine. No, so I'm fine with it either way. There's no difference. Which, by the way, right, I'll tell right you right what. Here. Do you understand that that is, like, we have as many five-star reviews. And again, this is not some sort of back alley, job of the hut, Tatooine, <laughs> <laughs> jerk and screw, uh, you know, record store, right? This is the A number one, top of the list, biggest music retailer in the world. We have more positive five-star reviews than the likes of Louis C.K., Aziz Ansari. I think everybody but, uh, on, on the top 10, we have more five-star reviews than everybody but The Lonely Island. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. And and here's the thing. You know, we act like it's a big game and a scam and we're trying to pull off a heist and blow up the Death Star. Uh, but I think everybody gets, like, what we're doing is is we're just, we are engaging our audience on a level so deep that they're willing to coordinate to make something happen, which is really all anybody releasing an album does. That Why do you think they put posters out for three months before the release of a Justin Timberlake album or whatever is because they want all the fans to buy it on the same day. All we did was say, we can't afford posters, so please, everybody, buy it on the We're same day. We're just going to grovel. Yes. <laughs> Hi. We would like you to buy our album, please. <laughs> so hey, there is a uh, an interesting. Ah, what I'm was just that? Looking at that hole. I don't know. Jammer B is, is spinning the ones and twos over there in the control center. <laughs> He's just blowing <laughs> it up right now. He's dropping it's a beat. Amazing. Jammer B, <laughs> drop a beat. <laughs> so so here's my here's my question. Um, yeah, like one of the comments, like the only negative comment. <laughs> Are we like, gonna like, actually do the one negative <laughs> comment? No, 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 but, but, but I, I want to talk about what it led into because I brought up the one negative comment, which a guy was like, well, this isn't stand up comedy and, and I didn't laugh. Uh, and then you pointed out to me that, uh, yes, it's not stand up comedy, but it, it is something different that I didn't realize somebody else was, do, was doing what we do. Well, I mean, or, or had, had done. And actually it made me think of it was, uh, because again, let me, let me break it down for everybody. Uh, me and Brian are intensely fragile people. We are <laughs> we are the Fabergé eggs of internet personalities. We're very delicate. We 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 shatter easily. It's not like we're fruit. Fruit would be like like titanium compared to us. You can yeah. bruise fruit. We are our uh, very, very fine glass that if even breathed upon too hard will shatter completely. So when Brian brought up to me the one, and literally, there is only one negative comment amongst an then, avalanche of unrestrained praise. Yes, and even then, even then, it was a qualified, apologetic, uh, this is not my thing, basically. Like, uh, I like these other guys. Including uh, compliments like to like us as personalities. 
Yes. That yes. we are great at yes. netcasts. Yes. They exactly. love us on the netcasts. <laughs> Both of us. Because normally, sometimes this happens where it's like a Brian Brushwood fan, a scam school fan or something. It's like, well, I like Brian, but this other guy is a complete braying animal. Uh, this right. was both of us, loves us, did not like the album because it didn't quite hit his, his positive taste. And of right. course, me right. and Brian so, 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 both independently focused on it. What? <laughs> Like moths to a flame, dude. We came up and we just burned our eyes out. And we and I turned to Just. I'm like, hey, dude, are you blind from having stuffed your head in the fire too? He's like, I think I am. But but here's the reason I only forget all that. That's no, that's, yeah, but but the reason the reason why is because I knew what you were talking about because the comment above it says this is the best improvisational comedy album since the 1,000 year old man or Bob and Ray. Buy it now, despite the fact that this man doesn't know. That it was the two thousand year old man. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is his backhanded uh, compliment, where he's like, "It's the best thing since Transmorphers or one of those other knockoff." Like this is a crappy knockoff of the two thousand year old. Do you man. think he was doing the jaunty jerk hand motion when he wrote it? The one thousand yeah. year old man. <laughs> he's like, "I'll bet they'll think this is a compliment." I'll tell you what, Brian. We're going to tell you or the audience, we're going to tell the audience what gigantic, massive realization we had and right. what we plan to do about it because it is it, it hatched a little bit of a plan right after we bring you these words from our sponsor. Don't cut away. Don't cut away. Keep, Ladies and keep, gentlemen, keep I just want to let you guys know that uh, we have a new, a, uh, a new sponsor here on the show, Brian. Pro yes. XPN, dude. You know why? Uh, first of all, do you use do you use anything like Pro XPN? Pro XPN does uh, uh, like VPN services, right? They they, they encrypt your data. Well, walk me through why around. I would want Pro XPN. Okay, so so here's the thing, and and I need you to to make sure I stick to the eye copy because I'm just going to talk about your need for a VPN anyway. Uh, all right. When you go from first of all, number one. Make friends with Hackfy's Darren Kitchen, and real fast, you'll understand the need to have some kind of v VPN encryption on your Wi-Fi. Because when you, when that little warning that we all ignore, where it says, hey, you're connecting to an unencrypted blur to blur to blur, that means people can capture your stuff and they can read it, right? Yeah. Uh, this encrypts stuff, it encrypts your traffic. Let's say that there are, uh, that there is um, some, I don't know how to put this in a way that doesn't... Okay, what everyone thinks of is that you're going to do something nefarious. No! And that you cover your butt. And that ain't it. No. It's you need to, It's called security. It's called good hygiene. It's called being online. Now, one of the things in the past... Good I used big to, fences you know, make great neighbors. There you go. Boom. Uh, all right, so t tell me a bit about X Pro XPN specifically. Brian, not only am I going to tell you about Pro XPN, but I'm also going to read it in the voice of Alex Jones. <laughs> Pierce, more than ever, your online freedom and privacy are under threat. Governments and ISPs want to control what you see and cannot see while keeping a record of everything you do, Pierce. Plus, that free Wi-Fi in coffee houses, hotels, and airports are putting you at risk because your passwords are sensitive data and they can be intercepted more easily than you think, Pierce. <laughs> That's why, friends, you need ProXPN. It's a global VPN, virtual private network, that works with almost any internet connection to create a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes back and forth. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing, and instant messaging programs. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes or private eyes. They're watching They're you. They're watching you. Yeah. Watching no, your every, every move. move. Yeah. Disgu so, okay, so here's... Yeah, so yeah, Disguise yeah. Your Physical Location gives you an unfettered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or travel to. I'll tell you what, we, we I was not familiar with ProXPN at the time, but I would have used it uh, because about six months ago, somebody was making a game out of uh, using a Skype exploit to figure out what my IP address was. And while we were live on the air doing DNS, uh, doing a denial of service attacks. And the so real question is whether or not Brian and Justin can survive the attack. <laughs> that's what that's what we certainly got asked over Twitter an awful lot. Uh, and it turns out we could because I used a private network 
to uh, to to set up a fake other account, and that's the one he DNS he DDoSed uh, instead of instead of ours. So here's the deal. We want you to go ahead on over to proxpn.com slash twit for more information and to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for an entire year. But I'll tell you what, folks, we got a special offer for you. Dust off the fine china. We're going to slap it down there in front of your face. Use code NSFW to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That's less than 5 bucks a month on the yearly plan. If you're not satisfied, you can cancel it within seven days for a full refund. They ain't going to jerk you around here, folks. Boom, all your cash right back in your lap. Go to proxpn.com slash twit and sign up with the offer code NSFW. We thank ProXPN for their support of NSFW. And remember, 1776 will encrypt again, Pierce, if you try to keep your prying <laughs> eyes on my data. Hey, so uh, specifically, like, the question that popped into my mind was when somebody said this isn't stand-up comedy and my brain thought no no no, it's not stand-up comedy it's and i didn't know how to describe it because i'm like i'm like it's two you know windbags flapping their, their their gums but you pointed out the historical precedent for what we're doing well and really it was uh something that i had known about and i had seen more of television incarnations but i had never listened to the the comedy album, which was called Two Thousand Years, with uh, Mel Brooks and the person whose name is escaping me right now, Carl Reiner. Yeah, uh, I never listened to it, and I was shocked at like how close. I mean, it, it's not. Let me let me pause. Mel Brooks is not a hero to me. He's a god. That's right. You heard Justin Robert Young. He's Taking it easy because he's about to tell you how much better he thinks he is than legend Mel Brooks. Go ahead, Justin. Explain how better you are. We are <laughs> not. Notice how we I are not exactly because we would go you. up to Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner and say, "Hey, listen, guys, good first draft. What you needed to add on was really embarrassing personal anecdotes that all revolve around ejaculate on some manner or another." <laughs> Yes. Uh, no. Okay. So, but but yes, uh, we are in no way putting ourselves in the same category. However, tonally and or not, not even tonally, I guess, uh, pacing wise, how would you describe it? Well, really, it's just there's a lot on the album, like what you saw. Uh, Animal Fairy was certainly one of them. Where me and Brian just tend to lapse into one of us doing a character and the other one interacting with him. For those of you who are following our mailing list, uh, the Captain Morgan stuff was specifically very, 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 very close to what Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks did on 2000 Years, which is right. them interacting with, uh, or, or Carl Reiner specifically, interacting and, and doing really the, the important, extraordinarily uh, dirty work of that kind of comedy act where you realize in those sketches that the, the, the straight man is really doing all the lifting and uh, Mel Brooks is coming in with these hilarious zingers as these various characters, but they are an amazing team. It really is just, just mind blowing how well they work together. And that idea, like they are playing a higher form of the same sport as we completely by accident like backed our way into. Yeah. No, no, no. And, and that's uh, I, like just realizing that there was any kind of precedent for a beloved comedy album that was anything like what we were doing just made me so. St Here we go. Yeah. The 2000 year old man, which we probably can't play since we don't own it. But uh, but take a look. I'm sure it's up on the YouTube somewhere. Yeah, I bought it on on iTunes for I think it was like ten bucks. It's not a long album because I guess all albums then did not, uh, you know, really last all that long. And it's certainly not as long as Night Attack Two. Enjoy the Garden, available right now for only three ninety nine on the iTunes Store, folks. The number one comedy album in in the United States, England, in the civilized. Ireland. Uh, can, can we just say in the civilized English speaking world? Can we just yes. officially declare that? If we want to get punched by a South African. <laughs> or, oh, wait. That's <laughs> a good point. Uh, we'll just say number one in in the, the in all that matters. How in all that? but District 9. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I so, don't want to uh, download guess... the fucking album. <laughs> it sounds like we got to play the belt song. I no. Think... <laughs> 
That's Fook. And what does what, what does that word mean, Justin? It means to. Uh, it's like when you try to hook somebody with your foot. <laughs> you fook them. Like a fook foot kick. I got like you. Trying to try to fook them like that. Kick. <laughs> People are saying you just won the boot. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I'll tell you what. I think it's racist if I get the belt for that. I think you're not allowing a wide enough berth for my my cultural experience. Fair enough. Uh, all right. So what? What? My great grandma was named Fook. So so should we? Old Marnie Fook. That was her name. I tried so hard, Justin, to steer this somewhere else. You just. <laughs> Just dive in head first. I'm just saying, I apparently you don't want to talk about my uh, history and my maternal grandmammy, Marnie no, no. Fook. I, I really, really don't. I'd rather watch uh, Tebutsatsula. <laughs> uh, so, look, here's. do you want to tease what we were thinking about doing at a certain summertime event? Do you want to, you want to pitch that and see what people think? So I became obsessed with this 2,000-year-old man album today, and... It was the first time that ever I heard something that was great, that was amazing, that was legendary, that had built, you know, helped build two amazing careers. And I was like, oh, man, like, we can't do that that good. But, like, we can hum a few bars. Like, we can do something interesting, and I think that our fans would like it. So what I pitched to Brian was that maybe we try and do our own... 2000 year old man style album so if you're not familiar with the album go listen to it it's basically just uh, a straight man and a character uh and it's recorded live and do our own uh our own kind of album now i don't view this uh as a, a sequel to night attack it wouldn't be a new night attack it'd be just like a fun silly thing and maybe we put it up you know for whatever price but i would think we need an audience for it and it would be a fun thing, maybe super late into the night one night uh, during Nerdtacular. Maybe we, we squirrel away to some uh, one of our rooms there and bring as many people as we can pack in and record our own 2,000-year-old man knockoff. We'll call, we'll call it the 30-old man named Justin. The 30-year-old man? <laughs> Yeah, but the, yes. <laughs> and it's just you just being like, what's going on, bro? Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's great. Uh, you want to play some Xbox? <laughs> you want to watch some Doctor Who? That's, is that, that's so that, that's the, the whole bit is that it's exactly me except I play Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. That's the Are only you? flight of fancy that we take with the story <laughs> is I play Xbox. Exactly. You uh, maybe, maybe you also uh, enjoy sports. <laughs> well, I do enjoy sports. <laughs> Well, I know, but that's why that's why people you got to ground the character in reality. So oh, okay, people, people, <laughs> that's what I was trying to. Never, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, I think I think it would be fun to to just kind of get together and jam, and then and then cut out the best parts and throw it into a little so, yeah. little single. The idea would be that me and Brian would each kind of have characters, and the other one would interview him. Uh, so we would kind of switch off the Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner role. Uh, but I think it would just be kind of a fun idea. And maybe it's something that like we do there and then we can do at other live events or maybe that's, you know, maybe that's another thing that people want to come see us do uh, going forward. But I was really just obsessed with that album. I guess it was all, this is all leading up to the fact that like I saw somebody do something cool and I'm like, me, me, I want to do things. <laughs> me too. You're like a child. Right? Like album Josie. that was recorded 70 years ago. <laughs> You're like you're like my kid Josie, just like seeing something like just hop in front of the camera, like I'll do that too. Why not? Go. Listen, there's a reason why I've always got along with Josie. There's a, there's a <laughs> lot of shared mutual appreciation between me and Josie. We're both very me too. Dude, I am so stoked about Nerdtacular though. I don't know if they're already sold out or what, but everything I'm seeing about it looks like it's going to be amazing. I still have no idea what we're doing. Oh, no, neither do I. I mean, we're, we're going to show up and we'll be handed. It'll be it'll be just like everything else we do. We'll show up having no idea. I mean, Brian, we'll we prepared very, paper. we were very, very hard for this, this show here. 
<laughs> for and for night attack for night attack too. Okay, now here's the question: Do you consider night attack two a year and a half long project or a three week project? Which do you feel like is the more accurate? Because we didn't we didn't call our shot until three weeks ago. Like, ah, sure, 420. It's coming out. Um, it's hard because like as much as I want to totally discount everything we do as having no worth or effort put into it. Um, there was a lot of time in between the recordings that I think were very, very valuable to them. Like once we got a little distance and perspective, we weren't just like, because when we recorded that first thing, I think there was, there was an idea that maybe like, eh, done it, recorded, cut, print. Yeah. What do you want? A safety, a backup, you jumping out of a plane, who cares? Put it out there. Right. They'll buy it. They're suckers, you see. They'll just take anything we throw out there. Stamped on horse meat. They'll buy it in droves. We just use them as a money farm. Get the rake out. Uh, yeah, so that's how, so so that, the, so your answer is um, yes. No, to, well, that, we, we thought that. That wasn't the case. Uh, we right. realized that the first uh, wave of stuff was not great, and so... We were going to uh, take, you know, the parts that were good and then record more. And it was just, I mean, it was just like, like you know, like life got in the way. So, I don't know. I, I don't think it was a three-week project, but I, don't, I certainly don't think it was a year and a half project. You know, it wasn't like we were working. Not like every day we were like, oh, man, I'll tell you what. I was just listening to that third syllable in gay or not gay. <laughs> it's totally bugging me, bro. We got to get back. Sweeten it up. Well, I'll tell you. And we do need we do need to we we talked about this briefly on one of the late night live streams, but we gotta give some major thanks uh to Brant Hughes was was one of the, the wizard who dropped everything and and took all this and filtered it. Cause there's there was a lot of stuff that got cut. Uh, we went through the whole album like track by track, and really about a third of the album was from the session a year and a half ago. A third of the album was from when I was up there in Oakland, and then a third of the album was in uh in South by Southwest in Austin. Uh, and the, yet the whole thing, it was mixed so well that it all flowed perfectly. And he was even able to go back and remove names for people you wanted to anonymize after the fact. Well, there's the, the track time. in the track gay or not gay. I uh, go through a series of events <laughs> that happened in my youth. Uh, naming, where naming specific first names all the while saying, <laughs> man, I really shouldn't use names. I should like change their names. And then you just continue to use their actual names <laughs> the entire track long. As Brent, like, because I eventually went back and, and asked Brent to take out all the names. And he's like, yeah, uh, you pretty much said like, like, oh, my friend blank. Oh, man, that's terrible. I shouldn't use his name. So anyway, blank. <laughs> uh yeah, no, he was he was amazing. John is continuing to be amazing. Because, Brian, what's the number one question that you're getting on Twitter right now? Uh, oh, whether when when is it coming out on Amazon, right? Uh, well, okay. Mine was going to be, was I one of the people you jerked off next to? Um, <laughs> so but I guess the Amazon thing is also a very popular question. Uh, it's not available on Amazon. Uh, can we give a, a real quick uh, reason why? Uh I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, well, why? I know in, in general, there's just a strange alchemy to to all this. That yeah, no, they, they they got this weird thing where it goes in and it kicks prices up or down or whatever. Like John is working with Ben Hubbard over at CD Baby, who personally hands on. Now Ben Hubbard, you remember last time with Night Attack One, he was the one who received like the 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 phone calls from Amazon. They're like. Uh, hey man, we're getting like 300 tweets for people crying about this album being the wrong price. You want this? This is not our fault. This is a CD baby thing. And then uh, and then they hit Ben Hubbard's uh, uh, up and and he's like, Hey, why are you guys hammering Amazon? You're like, Because because CD baby told me that it was their fault. And then <laughs> and so anyway, this time we wrote an email. Uh, we're like, Hey, we're sort of gonna release. Wait, this, hold on. Uh, Apparently, uh, it's on Amazon now. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Apparently, it's been listed on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, dude, then you could thank John Tilton. Yeah. And you could thank uh, uh, Ben Hubbard, and you could buy it for oh, look at that, three dollars sixty nine cents. I approve of that price. Three dollars and sixty nine cents right now uh, for Night Attack Two. Uh, other people we needed to thank uh, uh, Neshcom Bryce in, uh, in dude, amazing remixes that he did. He took he took our tracks and turned them into music. 
for the uh, for the last five tracks of the album. Uh, Jackie Hearn, who uh, of course puppetized everything, and uh, what else? Oh, look, uh, uh, a no, weird, no, weird of me, no. weird of me did clean versions of all the Jackie Hearn stuff, which is going to be very, very helpful for us. As somebody we... just pointed out, Justin, somebody just pointed out that there are no reviews on the Amazon version of Night Attack 2. Let me just say, boy, wouldn't it be awesome after we talk to our next talk about our next sponsor to come back and have some amazing reviews to look through. I'll tell you what, uh, I think that it'd be great if they were really straightforward and not at all just elaborate Byzantine references to things that we mentioned on the podcast two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh, you want to know what, Brian? I think what we're going to see on that Amazon page is going to be so gorgeous, we're going to want to take a picture of it. Uh, okay. What are we going to do with that picture? Well, I'll tell you what. It could be something so gorgeous someone else would want to use it when they type in huge success. <laughs> yeah, oh, you Wait a minute. I see what you're getting at. You're saying, let's say, now, uh, are we talking about a video image or a photo image? Because I know our friends over at Shutterstock do both. Well, we, we can talk about both of them, but really we want to highlight the 900,000 high-quality video clips. Shutterstock helps you take your new creative project to the next level. Are you sick of the level you're on? <laughs> go to the next one. There's always another level, one one higher. You can always go one higher. Come on, man, don't be afraid. Let Shutterstock take you there. You want to make, you want to set Night Attack Three uh, trailer in Beijing. You're not gonna go to Beijing. You're gonna go to Shutterstock. You're gonna type in Beijing skyline. Boom. There'll be some kind of awesome clip that you could throw in there, and you could just put a puppet in front of it. Jackie Hearn should be using Shutterstock, and you know what? She'll get thirty percent off her new account if she use offer code. NSFW4. Take that to the bank, Jackie Hearn. Oh, hell yeah, Brian. Hey, have you ever made a website? Yeah, yeah, I, I have. How about a publication? Uh, yeah, no, I've, I've made a publication. How about an advertisement? I, I, We advertised my publication on a website. Brian, a video. Yeah, we made a video of me advertising my publication on the website. How about any other type of project you could possibly think of? I've done that, too. If well, good was... God, Brian. Shutterstock has been waiting for you. Lonely. It sat alone behind lace curtains, wondering, this will be the day Brian will meet me. Oh, <laughs> takes a peek outside. Oh, good God. All these things you've been doing, Shutterstock would have spooned you. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, Soundwave in the chat right now is saying that he is using Shutterstock for the graphics on his next, next uh, iOS and Android game. So look, that's your any other type of project. Brian, do you think that Shutterstock is done adding video? Uh, yeah, I would imagine 900,000 is a lot. I, why, why would you need? I'm sure nobody could possibly go, do more than that. 10,000 video clips are added each and every week. What? On Shutterstock. That's more video clips than I've generated in my lifetime. <laughs> I know. Every week. every week. As we've all learned, don't go against technology. Get Shutterstock. 30% off your new accounts. Use offer code NSFW4 at checkout. Hey, let's check in and see. Uh, I wonder. Oh, you know what? We have, I have just now was given by uh, Jackie Hearn a, um, uh, the the clean version of the PSA video. Can can we get Jackie Hearn to paste that in the chat? Oh uh, yeah, actually... no, we have that actually queued up here live. Let's go ahead and take a look at right, uh, the, is, the clean from, version. First of all, if you guys are wondering what we're talking about, Night Attack Two. This is one of the tracks made into awesome puppetry video by Jackie Hearn. Brian, I think it's about time we did some good. Yeah, we got to do a PSA. Prostate exam? No. That's a public service announcement, Brian. Yeah, I would Here's do what we gotta public. do. We got we got there's a problem. We all know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say you go to a bar. Yeah. Have a few brewskis. Sure. With your pals. You're fine. Well, I mean, you gotta I mean, what are you gonna do? Leave your car? Well, you, you like gotta you do the math. What you do is you take your weight and then you subdivide by the cosine. Drink while you're doing the math. And then you do the math, you're like, Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Pretty, drive yeah, home. Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Drunk drive. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Happens. Did you just say drunk? Guy? Happens. That's not, not Brian. I'm gonna talk dumb. frank with you. It happens. We don't. It. <laughs> no, oh man, drunk YouTube, drunk huh? A bad idea. Well, I mean, <laughs> oh, fine. hold on. Pause this. Pause this. I, I, you have no idea. You have no idea how satisfying it is for me to watch YouTube completely take a dump on its own face there and, and twit and have it not be my fault. Because you can't blame Time Warner Cable. You can't blame Brian's connection. I'm on the other side of the world. Oh, so good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. Brian right now relaxing in a tub of Schadenfreude. Like he's just, no, pour because more, more Schadenfreude. I want it to exfoliate me. And I imagine it to be like an oatmeal kind of solution coming out of vases. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not deriving pain or pleasure out of someone else's misery. I'm deriving pleasure at the fact that it that it's not me, uh, that, it, that it's like I've been there and I relate. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Pour it upon my face. <laughs> oh, and it's just sliding down his face. <laughs> the Schadenfreude, more of it. <laughs> go, go, right, go ahead. I'm sure it's queued up by now. <laughs> we don't condone it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. But there wink. is a thing. <laughs> okay, don't do it. Okay, when you say the wink thing, that's all right. Wink. All right, what is your point? What is your point? Separate conversation. Okay. We've all been in the car. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, something really tough and important comes in on your phone. Sure, gotta text them back. Uh, well, I've, I've, I have. You done gotta that read one. and text. Well, you shouldn't. It's you really hey, shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't. No, that's shouldn't. Right, you should not. My favorite part about extending a word is you can tell how little I believe in it. <laughs> the longer you say it. All right, gotcha. All right. But it happens. Yeah, all right. Texting okay. while driving mm, happens. All right. Some people do that. You want to know what should never happen? What? Hi. I'm Justin Robert Young. Hey, I'm Brian Brushwood. And we're here to tell you that no matter what, never Ever. get drunk. And drive a car. No. Oh. And? And text? While driving. <laughs> Is that where we're drawing the line? That's not cool. Whoa. <laughs> you want to really, you want to get on a one-way road to Foxville, kid? <laughs> then get drunk What's the and start texting while you're driving. So uh, so the ad has to start off with a guy drinking from a party and get behind the wheel. And you're like, oh, he's totally going to get in a crash. But then he arrives at his destination and has a great time. Oh, and my then, God. Yeah. But then, and he's then, picking up chicks. Yeah. Everyone thinks he's cooler because he's been drinking. Exactly. He, like, crushes a beer can on his head <laughs> yeah. as soon as he walks out. <laughs> and then another dude gets in the car and be like, you know, are you at the party, bro? And he's like, beep, beep, beep. Oh, no. Kind of swerving. Business deals. Yeah. I just sold my company to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> While I was on the way here, exactly right, and then it, but arrives at his destination, uh -huh. and then that's when you the pans over you and me, and we're like, Justin texting, drinking looks to me like a recipe for disaster. For awesome, <laughs> no, for disaster because when you combine those two, and then like the texting guy kind of drinks, and the drunk guy, the guy gets starts, a text, starts texting, yeah, and then they get behind the wheel and they crash into each other, into each other. <laughs> exactly, I love it. The poetry, and they die, right? And then they're like, ah! and it's like, like if we want to, we're, we're kicking it like '70s style, right? Like where it's like not even Just like a gore. euphemism, yeah. Ah! Faces are ripping off. Blades of glass. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, his face like the face skins off and then falls off on the other and then, guy's and then face. Like and then like it's panned up just super graphic and it's it's on film right because it's all seventies style yeah. and you see the bloody the two of them like their heads are laying on each other with the, their bloody bodies comes and then all of a sudden stream of urine hits their faces and then and you pan up and it's both of our wank we're just dancing on them we're like should never drink and text. And drive. And then, like... She probably should not drink and text, period. Really, but driving on yeah. top of that is a, is the worst idea. I mean, sometimes you have to send a text <laughs> message when you're driving. <laughs> no, it stop, happens. Stop. This no, is bad. and then is... we pee on their corpse, 
And then, like, the last thing is we step on their corpse face that's already half melted, and it does a sickening crack like a log on fire. And then, then you see our you see our ankles, you see the pants just <laughs> flop down, and then right before it fades out, you just see, like, the half-crescent moon of a butt cheek coming into frame as we're about to drop deuces on their faces. And you're like, like, no, seriously, I hate it when people drink and text and drive. And drive. So take it from me and Bri. Don't drink and text and drive. So, okay, this is... I uh, think we've saved wanna... lives, Brian. <laughs> I don't feel like we get enough credit for all the lives we've saved. Who do we call on that? Can we call Obama? <laughs> I demand to be recognized like... for all the lives that we've saved by letting everybody know that it's never cool ever to drink and text while driving. Yeah, and you know what? And people, Some people ask, you know, like, oh, oh, what? We, hey, bro, uh, what? are you saying it's okay to drink and drive? Is that, did I hear Whoa! that? Whoa! Why are you taking away from the issue? We're fighting one front. We're not Nazi Germany trying to fight a two-front war, let alone a three-front war. We're trying to fight one front. We're saying no, not once, not ever. To drinking and texting while driving. Three strikes, you're stupid. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm going to say this. That puppet video is better censored. Like, like when you can't. I, I think it's way funny. Well, I mean, it looks like an actual graphic penis. <laughs> Instead of a sock wrapped around. A turkey baster. Sock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like an actual like somebody put their donger on the on the screen. Someone really put it on the glass on that one. Uh that was amazing. It looks great. And I love the 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 make sure the censor the cursing where it only obscures the first part of the first letter of the word. <laughs> And then, by the way, make sure that the part that you obscure actually has the same phonetic sound as the thing that it replaces. I'm, I'm not one to criticize Jackie Hearn's work. No, I no, that is weird am I. Though. Weird am I did it. And by the way, it looks oh. amazing. It looks great. It does. And I think it's very funny. And it's clean enough that we played it on Twitch, so that's all that matters. But also, whoo, deli thin, baby. Slicing that one <laughs> deli thin. Hey, there's a uh, we got reviews from Herbert Hoover. We got uh, reviews. See, from, my, 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 <laughs> but I don't want to read a review. Wow. Uh, Most of these, unfortunately, I think are uh, uh, <laughs> took your advice to heart. They all definitely didn't riddle them with uh, with inside. Oh references. wow! I was joking, people. Write really Byzantine, ridiculous reviews that we can read. I'll tell you what, Brian. We're gonna we're gonna get to those reviews in a second. Do me a favor. You go ahead and call some of the real the real gems. Right. Uh, I'm gonna start well, here. Next, get real quick, Justin. That's of course. Uh, uh, you know, since they're the ones who wrote them, maybe whichever ones we should see are the ones that should be marked most useful. Absolutely. So everybody, go ahead, because we have a very hard job <laughs> of doing no <laughs> prep and talking on the internet, and so we want you to do that job for us. Okay, real quick, I want to point out that Tom Z, unironically in the chat room, just goes, who's the a-hole who gave it four stars? <laughs> uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, Brian, can you describe for me the sound of competency and savings? <clears throat> uh... <laughs> oh, my God. I'm gonna need a little more to go on than than competency. You you want me to make a sound that sounds like that? Hold on, Brian. I'm calling you on my mobile phone. What's the sound of competency and savings? Rotting. <clears throat> there we go, Brian. They say there are no BS mobile service. What does BS stand for? Okay. <laughs> Look, basically, these are geeks who get it, who looked out, and they're like, what's the one technology experience that we all hate? It's stupid being p paying for plans that you're not going to use on phones you don't want and overpaying for family members where you're forced to, to buy them, like, high-end service because you got high-end service and you're trapped in your stuff. 
And what have they done instead, Justin? Here's the deal. They're an MVNO reseller of the Sprint Network. So anywhere you get Sprint coverage, you're going to get Ting coverage. They're a real network, man. You're going to get excellent service because these guys know exactly what it means to have a, a, a rapport with their customers. They're here for you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no it's contracts me, or Ting. ETFs. <laughs> Truly and completely contract free. No early termination feeds. Because I'll tell you what, that's BS, Brian. And they have said, no BS. We've eliminated no, that's BS. That's true. All right, so real quick. So but people who want to get a, look, we all need cell phone coverage at some point. And you're like, I want to do it. I want to spend a, the right amount per family member, per device. I want to use, I don't want to pay for services I'm not using. How's, how's the experience work? Dude, you're going to go visit nsfw.ting.com. You're going to save money and better manage your mobile phone usage with Ting. Check out their savings calculator to see how much you're going to save today if you get Ting, okay? NSFW viewers can also get $25 of their first Ting device when you sign up. Go to nsfw.ting.com. Start saving today. And I'll tell you what, man. I'm just reading, like, what you're going to do when you get your first Ting device. Dude, and real it's, quick. It's amazingly chat, simple. In the chat, people are, like Unix Punk is saying my cell phone bill this month was eleven dollars and thirty cents with Ting. And then uh, uh, also uh, Hoagie in the chat room says I have it. It works. Uh, yes. Like, these are people that are paying more for coffee than for cell service. I mean, like me, me and me and you. I mean, we pay ridiculous sums. We're morons. Yes. We're idiots. We, we should have our heads examined. <laughs> Someone call the doctor. <laughs> we stink. Ting rules. <laughs> NSFW.ting.com. Save $25 off your first Ting device uh, if you use or, or just uh, go to NSFW.ting.com. Yeah, go, go to NSFW.ting.com. You get a $25 credit uh, on your first uh, on your first device. And, dude, listen, just look at this chat room, man. Everybody's everybody's doing the ting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's doing the ting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Are you proposing new slogans for him? Can we get, like, a 1960s album cover with Justin waving his hands in the air with that? So kind of, like, colored flowers all the way around and, like, a swirly font that says, everybody's doing the ting. And underneath it says, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we could do, like, a children's show with just our made-up songs for ad reads. Because, I mean, like, you have two young daughters. You've watched your fair share of terrible children's programming, right? Yes, yes. No, it's uh, it's astonishing to me. When you when you have watched, like, all the children's programming and Netflix, you start to to veer into the dark back corners of what the kids, like, <laughs> just, just look at just like... What are you doing, kids? Because it's, I mean... And it's just off-brand off Korean children's programming? Yes, yes. And meanwhile, you're Hey, kids, would you like to learn how to read? <laughs> <laughs> Come into my castle. I'll teach you letters. <laughs> exactly, man. No, it's very... Uh, my uh, name wait, is I Colonel Learn-A-Lot. <laughs> I would like to have you learn the best letters in the world. The first is A. <laughs> Colonel Lernal. A for assassination. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so you're saying we should take them on. We should do our own kids show programming. Right in the nose. Night, night attack, we'll call it night attack three, pooping them diapers. And it'll, it'll be like we, us talking like to relate with the kids. Like, man, dude, do you ever, wait, tell me about the first time you pooped your diapers. Well, I think once ago, we should definitely like, you know, because like, like they might be giants at some point and they all just had kids and they, and they started making like kids albums and adult albums. They just dove right into it. I think we should do the nope. same thing. So I'm not gonna have a kid. You can. You've had enough kids. All right. Uh, you know what? I'll just maybe maybe you and I could write it, and we could just have the kids say it. We'll just set up Josie and Penny on mics. We're like, okay, I want you to riff on what's relevant to you, and then they're like, uh, oh, man, I, I just realized I got to stop right now. This is just gonna get darker, and I'm gonna try to actually. Night Brian, attack. power through. Power no. through. Let's go. 
Penny and Josie are sitting down and they're discussing what's relevant to them. <laughs> We're going to talk about tooting in the bathtub. Tooting in the bathtub's a big one. How daddy gets angry when he drinks the clear liquid. <laughs> One of, one of them tells your version of uh, racist Justin only at, like last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fresh and horrific in her mind. We told all right. We we did this on on our on our victory lap live stream that we did after it came out. But there is one track on the album that comes across when we uh, when it's on the album comes across like we're having a good time in the yes. same way we had a good time throughout the rest of the album. But that was not the in-person experience at all. No, well, because, like, like wh what's funny is, like, Justin so, built up this one track, like, oh, I got one, bro. It's a hilarious story. And I'm like, great, let's hear it. And so we're going, and he's like, so anyway, my dad's a raging alcoholic, right? Yeah. And I was like, so oh. The, the, was the, like, the, 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 the track is called Racist Justin, and you can listen to it. But, Brian, yeah, give it give the, the, the nickel tour. Well, the, yeah, the nickel tour is like, so my dad's a raging alcoholic. I'm like, oh, uh. Yeah. So what happened? And you're like, so you're like, well, you divorced my mom. They're like, oh, was it like crazy? And they're like, uh, no, like they had to call the police. It was pretty messed up. <laughs> like, all right, all right. Uh, and then then what happens? You're like, well, my dad like, tried to quit drinking, but he just kept on drinking. <laughs> but he's in fact an alcoholic, and he's chemically dependent on it. Right. And so and so I'm like, <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm like, that's crazy. So so did anything happen? We're like. Uh, well, one time. He, so, and, uh, and there's there's a story, and and we go and do it in the story. But it's basically my dad being very aggressive in a weirdo one night while he's drunk, and nothing, nothing is physical or weird or anything. It's just him being like a very odd but, person. But, but the reason Justin is illustrating this is because uh, it was, as he put it, the first time he had ever told this hilarious story. I'm using air quotes to somebody who was a father, and uh, and. You know, it, it, well, understand, it, yeah. No, this has been a hilarious story that I've told amongst my friends forever. Like, it's one of those stories where, like, we'll be at parties uh, and my friend will come up to me and be like, oh, my God, tell the, tell the Eric's favorite son or, like, you're a racist story. Like, I've been asked to tell the story to strangers and it has never not gotten a, a funny laugh. Like, it's obviously dark. You know, there's there's yes. an element of sadness to it, but that's... That's part of why it's funny. And I think the like me telling it in such an easygoing manner also kind of makes it funny. Uh well, no, and it is and it is a funny track, but uh Justin was genuinely surprised when uh when I responded with pretty much abject horror. So I'm yeah, I'm pretty much like doing the soft shoe that I've done a million times and like I know where all the audience like moments are, and then it's like, and then he says, like, puff, 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 you're a racist. And then and, like and I look and at like Brian. The first thing I say is like, I'm like, I'm like, how how old were you when he did this to you? Thirteen. Let's get on with a hilarious show. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> and so I'm like, I was like, I was like, yeah, but but what does that do to you inside to hear that? I mean, that's. Anyway, so he says, "Have you ever blanked a black girl?" Ha 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 And like, I'm like waiting for all the all the like laugh breaks from Brian, and then it gets to the end, and it's like, it's like the 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 Michigan J Frog, uh, you know, cartoon. <laughs> We're like, he expects to lift up the thing, and he's gonna do the "Hello, my honey" thing, but instead, he's just yeah. like ribbit, and like that's what, like I'm like, <laughs> and you're just like. I gotta stop recording. <laughs> this is not oh, funny. There's no way this is making the album. This is. I think I actually said that. No, you were like, it was like shit. You were like shaken. Not only yeah. did we have to stop the recording, but like we had to like get out a mini therapy session between <laughs> us to even reset for the next day's stuff because it was the first yeah, time that like, like. You heard or that I told that story to somebody that was like in any way sympathetic to my father because in everybody that I had ever told that story, it was like I was the kid. They were my age. You know, uh, even if even if you've gone through stuff with your dad, and you haven't always had the best relationship with your dad. You can see some element of yourself in that story through me. And in that right. one, you were like, oh, my God, I am forever three drinks away from that. <laughs>
<laughs> well, it's like all the yes, exactly. They're all, I'm, I'm like Justin. I'm I'm gonna quit drinking altogether. I'm, I'm gonna be sober forever now. This is a uh, this is horrifying. I don't ever want to be this. <laughs> well, I think it's it's safe to say that like my dad is a a fun. He's an alcoholic. Like he's he's not. <laughs> this is not a, a thing where it's like a casual drinker becomes my dad. My dad was like an absolute dead end. A chemically dependent alcoholic. <laughs> right on. <laughs> and I assume he either still is or he's dead, which he actually probably is, and I still don't know. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. This is the hilarious stories hour. Don't cower. So here's the if there's one thing, like uh, this is a huge testament to uh, Brant's editing abilities because it does not read. Like, it is it is a funny track. He took what I thought was genuinely horrific and turned it into something definitely uh, funny. <clears throat> uh, yeah. No, he got it. Uh, it was it was shocking to me to listen to it and hear that, like, I, I don't remember you laughing at all when we recorded it. Uh, and and it, it actually doesn't it sound just, out it, of place. It, it, and I'm glad, I'm glad that he liked it. But I'm glad everybody... Has like I've gotten a lot of good feedback on that on that track that people thought it was uh, thought it was really well, funny. Weirdly, weirdly, it's one of those things where it's like that's what makes uh, this album different from the first one is there's actually extended periods with a lot of heart in it. I mean, it's we, we knew it was very confessional, but but there's a you know even uh, the special massage track is kind of a weirdly awkward uh, homage to monogamy. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's weird. I think it's dead on. It's it's a it's a it's a parable. You know, yeah. <laughs> they should they should put that in the Bible. Yeah, it was right after the Sermon on the Mount. That oh my said God! It. Yeah, no, it was the the, it the last temptation of Christ sucked compared to that. <laughs> uh, and lower mission went to Indonesia, and <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. We've got uh, from the future. I really hate the funny, so I created a time machine to go back and stop the recording of a great comedy album. I needed to stop Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner from the recording of 2,000-Year-Old Man, but I landed here instead. So I'll still make it back there, but not till I take care of Jerry and Brushwood. I just hope there's not a comedic error that brings them back with me. <laughs> That's, uh, of course, a reference to a uh, time machine race racist. Uh, which, by the way, Chase Go Forth, who is a friend of ours on Twitter... And yeah. who made a movie, 40K, which was described by Penn Jillette as, I forget what, what the specific platitude was, but it was like the best independent movie he'd ever seen or something like that. It was uh, really over the top praise for it. Uh, is like not joking that he wants to make a feature film out of Time Machine Racist. <laughs> Be pretty amazing. I'm okay with that. Uh, we just need to write a script. I guess would be the problem. Is that we need to write no, we a don't. script? What we need to do is talk about writing a script. Promise we'll have one in time. Last minute, ask Chat Realm to throw something in a Google Doc, and then uh, sell it on on iTunes. Boom. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Look, all of these. I'm surprised. There's too much. Uh, oh, here, here we go. Um. From the first to the last track of this great comedy album, Night Attack 2, Enjoy the Garden, Brushwood considers Young in a wider context. Brushwood links Young with the class of people whom he has become so inextric inextricably associated. They're the society of persons so prominent during the 2000s as in Night Attack. Brushwood and Young sh attack the shallow so social climbing emotional manipulation, which only causes pain. With decadent cynicism, the partygoers in Night Attack 2 cannot see anything beyond their own enjoyment. Young's love is frustrated by the social situation, and his rise to infamy symbolizes the uh, dangers of his chosen path. It goes on for another paragraph, and it says, or all this could be lifted and edited from a review of The Great Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Brian, I think, uh, again, number one, everybody who helped us with Night Attack 2, Enjoy the Garden, thank you so much, uh, specifically, John Tilton, Brant Hughes, Jackie Ahern, Weird M.I., everybody else in the chat room. Neshcom. Neshcom, who, who did all the remixes. Everybody oh. in the chat room who made this uh, the success that it is, you have no idea how much it means 
to me and Brian. Uh, but we do have to look forward because we are only as good as our next hit, Brian. That's right. We're done. You know what? There's one problem with Night Attack 2 is I was not drinking a 20% hard alcohol wine brandy cocktail that was responsible for the downfall of so many civilizations before ours. And, and we plan to fix that. They say third time's the charm, which is why I'm going to say for the third time in three weeks that I swear this week we're going to sign the contracts. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that, too. I'm so sorry, Steve. Hey, to take us out, do we have a link? Can we listen to uh, to one of the Neshcom remixes? Maybe the um, uh, uh, the, the superhero one? or felt like Are there hero? any that are safe? <clears throat> I think that I think the the that one was maybe I don't, I don't know. know. Uh I don't on know. on the Night Attack 2 album. If you go to uh here I'll I'll go we got Animal Fairy Superhero I believe was. Oh wait, let's do the movie, movie draft minute. Movie draft minute. Movie draft minute. In the browser, just go ahead and play that. He said helpfully. Yes. Welcome to Move Draft Minute for the week of April 22nd, 2013. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. Welcome back, video watchers and audio listeners. It's the summer season, and you know what that means. 8-bit music and a fresh crop of movies. Let's check out the rankings. Tom Merritt, Scott Johnson, Sarah Lane, Chester Robert Young, and C. Robert Cargill are all tied for second place, still waiting for their first film to be released. And in first place, with Oblivion bringing in $38.1 million this week, it's Brian Brushwood. And Woo! that is your movie draft minute for the week of April 22nd, 2013. It's good Man, to be back. Awesome. Brian, uh, oh, what, yeah. how happy are you? No, uh, uh, not at all. I'm, I'm channeling all my love and, and hopes into Iron Man because Oblivion did not. It, it did, it's going to do less than half what it was projected to. That's a pretty epic failure. I mean, but also... Iron Man 3 is tracking better than the Avengers. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And by the way, the Avengers made the most money of anything ever. Ah, well, you know, some people might think that's good. We'll, we'll find out. It's tough to say. Uh, I'll tell you what. At the risk of jinxing it, I think it's going to be the biggest movie that's ever come out. Look oh, out, Avatar. Big... Look out below, because something's coming right up your pooper. Uh, no, it's not going to do anywhere near Man of Steel. Man of Steel, the second coming, fourth, the fifth, the eighth, uh, to the twelfth time that we're seeing a Superman movie, it's going to be huge. No, I'll tell you what. Awesome. I think I want as many Marvel movies as possible. I'll tell you what. I'm sure that they can tell a million different Iron Man stories, and they're not all slowly going to be realized as the same exact story told over and over and over again. And it's super awesome that they made the Mandarin wearing crazy hipster trucker shades. <laughs> Actually, I'm totally cool with that. And I'm cool with it being the same story over and over again, just as long as this is the one that makes the most money. I actually am so excited for Iron Man 3. I like Dude, and, me too, man. It looks amazing. Uh All right, but I, I will say this. We didn't we didn't talk about it, especially because your YouTube was going so haywire last week, but like I I literally thought that my my entire summer movie draft all hinged on the next Man of Steel trailer. That if it was like even as good as like the Spider-Man trailer, the amazing Spider-Man trailer last year, that I was toast. Yeah. Because if yeah. it was like Oh look, Superman! Mm. No, 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 no! Like they brought they brought it on that last trailer. It's amazing. Yeah, but it looks like I mean, because really, it's like it depends on how good the flick is. You know, it's going to get a good opening weekend, but it's like Nolan movies have never been like oh my god, front loaded. It's like Inception, where it's a good opening weekend, and then by the way, it's so amazing that people just keep staying and going and over and over and over and over again. So yeah. Yeah, no, it could definitely be that. Uh, all right, look, I guess we'll just go ahead and wrap things up for this episode of NSFW. Uh, we love you guys. Do we have music? Or I guess don't play the music because then I won't be able to hear me. That's all right. I love you guys. Do me a favor. Die in a fire. Bye, Night Attack 2. See you next Tuesday. It's time to go and I'm so depressed and I'm gonna spend the rest of the week in bed until the next... NSFW
The show is through and it breaks my heart Cause I just can't bear to be apart from Brian and Justin of NSFW Oh, I'd rather die in a fire Than to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile Than do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while Oh, NSFW I love you I love